Hey guys, it's me here. And it's Zach. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you timers. And our agenda for this tutorial, first we're going to show you what it's going to look like at the end of the tutorial. We're going to create a timer. Then we're going to show you how to show a message when you finish the level so you can see your time. And we're right. just going to run the game. Let's get started. You can see we left off uh, last time. Everything's pretty much the same, except if you look at over here, the top left corner, you see a timer going on. Six, seven, eight, nine, right? So that's going to show how many seconds you've spent in the level. As soon as I hit the flag, so it's congratulations on being level. You can see your time on the top left. Uh, so it took me 15.3 seconds to finish the level. I click OK. The new level starts. The timer gets reset to zero. It started from zero. Now it's two, three, four. And again, it just a little message just says congratulations on being the level, and I can see my time. All right, so let's go back to where we left off in the last tutorial. And we've shown you how the game ends, so we can unbold that off our agenda. And now we want to create a timer. And the way we're going to do that is going to create a new object. And we're going to do obj underscore timer. And uh, this object is a little different because it has no sprite. It just is the text of what, how long the timer has been. So the first thing we want to do is start our timer at zero. So you go to add event. And you see this other. And then go to room start. And then we want to go to our control tab. And you see the box the, the var in it and it says set variable so we're going to drag that in so uh, just to explain a bit about what a variable is uh, variables are really cool things that we can use um, to make our lives easier when we're developing games um, so think of variable as a name for a piece of data right so for example um, it's say if you're in a math class and you say like 7 minus x equals 2 so in that case x is a variable and it should be 5. Well, we can use variables for many other things to represent you know, anything. So here, for example, we're going to have a variable called time. And all that means is that there's this number, and I'm going to be calling it time. So every time I use time, it's going to reference whatever number it's supposed to be. So when we start the room, we want time to be 0. And we're going to do things to time to change it. For example, we're going to increase it as the game goes on. So the variable is the name of what you want it and then the value is how what number it represents. So we've shown you how to set start it at zero. And now we want to make that timer go up. So we go to add event and we want to go to their step event which gets called, remember, thirty times every second. So we want to actually increase our time variable. So we go back to set variable and remember it's still called time. And we want to make our value 1 divided by 30. And the reason why we do that is because there are 30 s steps in every second. So after one second, the timer will have increased by 130 30 times. So it's like 30 divided by 30, which is 1. So after 30 steps, one second, then the time will be 1. And then you want to check this box called relative. And that means that you're adding to the time and not just setting it to that. So click OK. And now we've incremented it. And now we want to draw it so that the player can see how long it is. So there's actually a draw event. So we click on add event, go to draw. And then you see this draw variable. And so we drag that in. And remember that we named our variable time. And we want to click again relative. And that just says where it is on the screen. So zero. Uh, x is 0 and y is 0 and it's relative because it's basically saying that wherever the object timer is on the screen it should be drawn at that exact location. Yeah, so instead of having a sprite we have text that's being drawn. So we're showing you how to draw the screen. Now we want to put it actually in our room. And it's good to have an easily visible place, so let's put it in the top left. Let's do that for level two also.
Now let's run our game and see if we can see our timer. Cool, so we can see it. It's right up here. And so I'm going to move and see if it gets reset to zero when I go to the next level. And it does. It has been reset to zero. And it's going up. You can see it's going every second. It's increasing by one because we've told it to do so. Cool. And then the last step should be pretty easy. Right. So you can see the timer going up. You just The problem is when you finish the level, you can't really see how long it took to beat that level. So we want to have the user be able to click, the, get the guy who's playing the game be able to click OK so we can look at it. So let's go back to where we end the level, which is when the player collides with a goal. So we go to the goal object. And the first thing we want to do is to display a message. And we've already gone over how to do that in a previous tutorial. So let's drag in the me display message at the very top. And let's just tell them that congratulations that you beat this level. And if you want to look at your time, you can see in the top left. OK. So now it'll stop, and they can see their time and how long it took them to beat the level. And so let's just make sure that everything's working correctly. OK, we move. Boom. Message comes up. Pause the time. So it took me 2.9 seconds to beat this level. It's pretty fast. And 5.3 seconds. Cool. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Make Remember sure to save your work. And ask your uh, teachers if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time. Yep. See ya.